This is my house, and these are the thousands of cicadas that I spent five weeks observing, recording data, and hanging out with. And by doing some science experiments and some fun activities, I'll reveal all the juicy details that you didn't know that you wanted to know about cicadas, such as what they eat and what eats them and why there's so many this year. I'll also show you exactly what happens when you decide to fly a drone over a swarm of hundreds of them. But first, try to remember what you were doing 17 years ago. Go ahead, I'll wait. Ah uh, yes, remembering 2004, a time when Facebook only existed at Ivy League schools. The number one hit on the radio was the song Peso. Yeah by Eight, Usher. Yeah, yeah. George W. Bush was president. I'm George Walker Bush do solemnly swear. NASA had just landed the rover Spirit and Opportunity on the surface of Mars to explore the geology and the 2021 class of brood X cicadas that you're hearing right now were just being born. Oh, and that is a nymph. You see, before the cicadas become these flying loud things that we either hate or we love, they actually spend 17 years eating sap from underground tree roots as these wingless creatures called nymphs that look more like crayfish than flying insects. And as soon as they emerge from the ground, they shed their exoskeletons to reveal their wings and then find their way to the nearest tree to start making noise. That sound that you hear is actually their mating call, and the only purpose for them coming out of the ground is to find love. The males have a special organ called a timbal that they shake back and forth to attract their mates. When the females are interested, they flick their wings to make a clicking sound that lets the males know, hey, it's okay if you love me. And the extremely loud and sometimes obnoxious droning sound that you hear is thousands of them doing that all at once. To figure out when they're the loudest and exactly how loud they can get, I decided to measure the loudness of their droning with a decibel reader all throughout the month of May and into June. Between my wife and I, we measured their loudness at least four times a day for 30 days and sometimes more. We collected data in the sunshine and in the rain and noted the temperature and weather conditions with each data point. Okay, all right, <laughs> last cut. Overall, the data showed that at least for this brood of cicadas, they were loudest around noon and early evening and quietest during colder temperatures. Here you can see the loudness and temperature readings for each point plotted on the same graph. Pause the video to see how the peaks and valleys of the temps closely correlate to the high and low loudness readings. This graph shows just the highest recording for the loudness and temperature each day. You'll notice that the loudness graph reached its maximum on June 5th, on one of the hottest days in June when the cicadas were recorded at 91 decibels. Let's just say it was really loud. It's the equivalent of having your ear about two feet away from a running lawnmower. The temperature also just happened to be 91 degrees. From then, we noticed that more cicadas started to die off than were emerging. And even though they were still louder on hotter days, there just weren't as many of them. They're here for a loud time, not a long time. And speaking of a loud time, when I first noticed the cicadas in mid-May, there were hundreds of them just hanging out in the overgrown grassy part of my yard. And it was just way too tempting to not fly my drone over them to see how they react.
I thought they would fly up into a giant swarm, but they didn't even budge. Not even a single cicada left its post. It's like they were dead set on the mission at hand, the entire reason for them coming out of the ground, which is to find a mate and for the females to lay their eggs underneath the bark of tree branches. In this clip, I got so close to them with my drone that I accidentally ran into the branch that they were on. And they were just like, yeah, whatever, dude. Just let us have our babies. In this frame alone, I counted 51 cicadas looking for a spot to lay eggs on the branches, which means those are the ones that are most likely females. Each female can lay up to 500 eggs, and they do so using a hollow saber-like structure called an ovipositor. And they essentially use their abdomens to pump the eggs under the tree bark. By counting just the 51 cicadas on that single bunch of branches, there were enough females to lay up to 25,000 baby nymphs, which will fall from the tree in a few months and burrow into the ground where they will remain until 2038. Just imagine how many cicada branches there are in all of these trees, and then consider how many eggs are being laid within this brood. The number is in the many billions, with scientists estimating up to 1.4 million cicadas per acre. But they can only hatch their eggs if they don't get eaten first. Apparently, cicadas are the number one item on the food chain buffet while they're around. Perhaps this is because they're chewy, they're tasty, and they're really easy to grab. Part of the reason they come out in large numbers all at once is so they can have a chance to lay their eggs. They say, hey, if we all could just come out at once, they couldn't possibly eat all of us. Some people call cicadas the shrimp of the land because apparently they have a very similar texture and taste to shrimp, which made me very curious. And after some quick recipe lookups online, I realized that you can barbecue them, boil them, broil them, saute them, bake them. There's um, shrimp kebabs, shrimp creole, shrimp gumbo, pan fried, deep fried, stir fried. Turn it around and eat the other side, you eat the butt. Yeah, try it. What's it taste like? Does it taste like shrimp? They taste somewhat like almonds, probably because of their diet. But if you want to eat them, make sure you don't have a shellfish allergy. Because in addition to preparing them just as you would shrimp, they also carry the same allergen. It's crazy for me to think that when the baby brood egg cicadas that are being laid in the trees right now begin to emerge, my son will be 20 years old. <laughs> and if you remembered something from history or popular culture or even from your own life, feel free to post that down below in the comments. It'd be so fun for us to reminisce together about exactly what was happening 17 years ago when the cicadas that you're hearing right now were first being born.